our harness design. In order to do that, I'm going to select this particular component and I'm going to um, right mouse button click and use the open, open in solid edge, to show you um, how we can um, read information from an ECAD system and apply wires to our components. What I'm going to do is I've, I've opened up this part uh, called uh, 604 and if you go to the tools you'll notice we've got the assign terminals command and when I select on that you can see it assigns a component name and terminals to a model for wire harness design. When I select that particular command it brings up a dialog. You'll notice that I've named this particular component relay so I gave it a name and I also set each one of these holes as a terminal one through eight so there's four holes on, on uh, there's four holes on each side so I have eight total terminals and they're all uh, preset. What we can do is we can read information in from an ECAD system we'll go ahead and close this file and when we read information in we can designate where we want the wires to go what component well this component name is relay and we can also tell where the wires need to go in that component giving defining the actual terminal in order to do to show you this we've got a motor here and you can see that we've got several different components uh, we also have a couple of components here that we can uh, create our wires from so let's go ahead and take a look at this option this is the harness wizard so just click on that wizard and basically it allows you to go out and, and uh, in this case it says select the format used for the component and connection documents. So in this case we can, uh, the document format can be in uh, ECT Promise or SIM or uh, the other options that we offer but in this case we're going to use the sample because it's just a solid edge sample to show you how we can do this. When you click on the browse you can see that I've already created under the Iron Eagle the engine.cmp so we'll select that for the component and then for the uh, connections we're going to grab the engine.con once the first step is completed by defining the the components and connection document we can go to the next step and this basically shows you that it's going to the different components that I uh, talked about graphically here there's the relay and it has a unique ID and a relay now obviously you can come down and you can um, you can actually select uh, or assign a component if it's not already been assigned and let you assign it on the fly as well as assign an occurrence so there's several options while you're in this form to do it uh, uh, a little bit more manual than what I'm doing it but it does show you that they're all populated meaning they're all in the file so we can go to the third step now the third step basically defines the actual path the name and which component you're going from and which component it's going to. Okay? And also you'll notice it tells us uh, this out that the, the cables that it's going to create. And when it's orange it means that, that it needs to be defined. So we'll just go ahead and pick, um, in this case we'll just pick 14.3 again. And because it finds it, it gives you an option to uh, set the cable sheathing. How far away from the end of the, of the wire does the cable begin? And we'll use 15%. It also does allow you to view a cable so if you pick for example you pick one let's go back to the beginning and you select a um, uh, select this it's actually going to show you where that wire is created from and to so you can actually kind of look at them before you start creating them uh, to see where they're going to be actually created and there's the, the wire between those two components so when we're done and we're satisfied we can click on the finish button and as quick as, it, as quick as it is to select that button you'll notice that the wires in this case there are five wires uh, actually six wires created that come up to this component from these two components over to the different components on the engine now immediately you might say well you know this looks like it goes through this part well I want to point out that you can easily select the endpoints or the blue dots if you will and you can edit their definition and when you do that if you want you can lock into a planar uh, plane or, or an axis and you can make an adjustment so if I just want to move this down a little bit maybe move it out so it doesn't look like it's going into these parts I can easily do that once you're satisfied you can come over to Pathfinder again select harness right mouse button click to create your physical conductors 
and it will actually create the wires for you. Now it does say here portions of the physical conductors could not be created adjust the associated path or properties. So let's take a look at what could be causing that. The beauty of the system is that we can open up Pathfinder and you can see that it looks like we have a problem with wire 10 and it's got a bang mark in front of it so it's telling us it can't create the conductor. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come over and grab that point and smooth its path out a little bit and you'll notice immediately as soon as we move it it updates the, the uh, geometry and you'll notice that the uh, mark actually the bang mark actually goes away so you can see that we no longer have a problem and it allows us to create the physical conductor so just be aware that if 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 the wire is making a 90 degree angle or something or it's too sharp you might need to adjust the uh, the placement by identifying the blue dot and then right mouse button clicking to edit uh, its definition so for example again I'll grab that blue dot and then I can change its location. I can lock to a plane or an axis if I want to uh, move it and you'll, it'll, it'll update automatically on the fly. Now again I always like to turn off um, information so that when we get in here I can do a hide all on wires. It'll turn off the wire frame. I can hide all blue dots and then you can zoom up on your model and you can see the wires that were actually created uh, for this wire harness design. Again being able to read in information from an ECAD system is a pretty powerful um, uh, way to create a wire harness and all you have to do is just remember you have to give it a component name and then give each one of the holes or wherever the wires are going into a terminal uh, uh, number and you're on your way. When you're done you might be interested in creating a harness report in, for your components and connections. And for, uh, so, for example, for the components, we can um, go into the format and you can see it actually will create a uh, uh, report of all of this information. If there are other, if other information that you want to pull from the files, uh, the description, the uh, component name, its occurrence, unique ID, any of that information can be added over to the right side and that's what's going to show up in your uh, components. Now the same for the connections. If you run the format on it, it will show you the information for the connections. Well, one thing I will point out for this particular demonstration is that this first um, first set of wires and cable I actually did use the harness wizard to create that so when you run the harness wizard and you go to browse you'll notice that there's a kill switch dot cmp and a kill switch dot con that particular um, harness or, or, or connections and components is what created this wire from from here over to here and uh, basically you can use the reports to backfeed information to build the .con and .cmp files. So with that it kind of gives you a good overview of how to run this particular portion of the demonstration, the wire harness, harness design, building wires manually or and also cables as well as uh, using the harness wizard to uh, read information in from an ECAD system. So with that, this concludes this portion of the Iron Eagle demonstration.